back. So for the next session, we're uh, super excited to have Elad Hazan. He's going to be talking about a regret minimization approach to multi-agent control. Um, oh, I'll just do a quick reminder. So again, the last session of the day today is going to be this like open problem session. It's going to be uh, super informal, not recorded or anything. So yeah, if you have uh, you know open problems you're excited about, put your name on the board. But with that, I'll, uh, I'll let Elad take it away. Cool. Thanks, Dylan. Is the volume working? People hear me? Yeah. My name is Elad Khazan. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Dylan, for inviting me and Kostas and whoever else is in charge of this uh, seminar. It's really a pleasure to be here, really a pleasure after all this time to be able to talk to people face to face. And already, like just a couple of days, so many ideas. It's, it's uh, amazing. So, pleasure to be here. And um, this is work with uh, Udaya Guy, who's my student. He's here and he's the main author of this work. And uh, Udari and Naomi Leonard was a professor. Udari is her student, and Naomi is a famous control theorist from Princeton. Um, and this work is about regret minimization for uh, multi agent control. What is multi agent control? It's the same thing as multi agent RL. So, same topic we've been discussing. Here's the motivation. I always like to think of a motivating problem so that we don't kind of get too up high in the air with a theory and it's kind of grounded by something. By the way, please feel free to ask me anything during the talk. Uh, I don't think I will take the full 45 minutes. No one ever complains if it ends before time, so that's good. Uh, so you have a lot of time for questions. Uh, the motivation is the following. So we have some um, device, like let's, this drone here, and it has actuators or the motors, um, four motors in this case. And what would be a good way to design a robust system? I mean, there are many approaches to this thought process. You can think, okay, I'm going to design it to various robustness hidden in the design of the system and so forth. But the approach we take is what if each actuator, if each motor is independent and acting rationally, rationally means it minimizes regret, can that give rise to extra robustness in the sense that let's say one motor fails, the rest of the motors will continue to kind of do the best they can and maybe still fly the drone. Uh, maybe there is some noise or information difficulties. Maybe we want to add a motor and we want to change the whole system. We add something in, in the tail, you know, some propeller and then wanted to keep on doing well, everyone to adjust. So there are a lot of advantages to this thought process. I guess some of them were enumerated by my uh, colleagues here today and yesterday of independent agents acting together for some joint goal. <coughs> uh, the difficulty, of course, is that regret minimization in non-convex games is hard. And we just heard a talk, excellent talk by Noah, who, who said as much. He didn't talk so much about the regret, but about uh, equilibrium. But the regret was even known before that to be hard in this kind of situations. So it's a hard problem. Um, so it, it's very nice to have heard a lot of the, the related work already in this conference by Chi Jin and Noah and others. There's been a lot of work in, uh, so this is very recent and has some theory to it, which is great. A lot of um, work in the control literature, uh, the centralized distributed control. Um, our take is different, okay, than what you have heard. It's different from several aspects. So. We heard that computing equilibrium is hard and therefore people re resorted, the, my predecessors in this conference resorted to relaxing the notion of uh, equilibrium and maybe doing all sorts of um, clever algorithms to, to allow for it and so on. Um, because it's not convex, it's not a convex setting. Okay, so I'm going to do something different. I want not only equilibrium, something much better. I want optimality, but it's going to be with a stronger set of assumptions. Okay, so that's going to be the distinguishing theme compared to what we've held. And it's not like, it's not directly, it's related, right? We're both attacking the same problem from, from a different direction. And I think this, this kind of approach also has merit, as I hope to convince you. Um, yeah, so our focus is stronger notion, optimality, but with stronger assumptions. And before I tell you what the game theoretic setting is, I will start from a simpler setting. This simpler setting is online convex optimization. I think, well, I know a lot of you in the audience, and therefore I know that all of you know this very well. I will still give you the formal 
definition and then say, what is the extension to the multi-player setting that I'm looking for and how that will give rise to something in the control setting. So in online convex optimization, we have a player and an adversary and the player picks some point in a convex set which we denote by X and then the adversary gives a, a cost function which is convex. So this is different from RL. Typically we have all these weird things, right? Transition matrix and so on, it's not convex. Here it's convex. Um, and then there is a loss and we look at the aggregate loss, uh, which of course nothing can be said about because this is an adversarial game. However, um, we can look at the regret, which is the difference between the total loss and the best loss in hindsight from any point in the convex set. We say that we minimize regret if the average such difference goes to zero with the number of iterations. Um, and there are a lot of algorithms known that minimize it. For example, online gradient descent can move in the direction of the, what's good, the direction of the gradient of the last cost function, even though it has not to do with the, the future one, it's still known to minimize regret at an optimal rate of square root number of iterations. Um, I went through this very quickly. If there are any questions, please ask ahead. I think all of you are familiar with it. I'm going to look at an extension of this, okay? So the extension is the following. I'm looking at a distributed OCO setting. We have many players. Each of them potentially chooses a point from a different, they're all the same boxes here because I didn't have the power to draw new ones, but they could be potentially different uh, sets, okay? And then they each, every iteration they give, each of them gives a, a point and then the adversary gives a cost function which is convex in every one of, he, of it, the arguments. And it's applied to all the points simultaneously. This kind of a joint cost, okay? It's a joint cost. And this is repeated again and again. And similarly to before, we would like the average regret to convert to zero with the number of iterations. Uh, the hope here is that we can optimize the joint cost even though they're each acting independently. Okay, that, or minimize regret, even though they're each acting independently. Yeah, clear? So this kind of thing, not exactly this thing, surprisingly, it's so, such a trivial setting. I, would, I was sure it was considered, but not exactly this. So there are some kind of similarities that were considered in the literature. As far as I know, not exactly this. There are various knowledge graphs or whatever. This, the knowledge, everyone knows everything. There's no knowledge issue here at all. Okay, it's like a joint game. No question about the setting. So now, what can we do? Can we can regret be minimized asynchronously? Let's say that each player uses a no regret algorithm. Maybe gradient descent, maybe mirror descent. I don't know what. And then we can define this is the naive thing, right? So each player has a loss function, which is the loss given what all the other players are doing. This is a convex function. That's by assumption by my construction. And let's say they each minimize regret, will it converge to the optimum? Any guess from the audience? Yeah. No. Okay, that's a good guess, but <laughs> good guess, but uh, I thought so too, honestly. So here is an, here is an uh, example. That's kind of, I was surprised by that. This is actually the only point in my talk is this and the next slide, kind of like a small point, which is neat, I think. So think of this loss function. We have uh, two variables, scalars, let's say, and given by this expression. And now consider two players that they alternate. They play minus one, 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 minus, you know, like this. They each minimize regret because when you plug in minus one, one and look what the other one is doing, it's doing great. You know, it's kind of like doing the best thing for that particular choice of the adversary. So, they actually both have a negative regret compared to the best fixed. So in the, instantaneously, they're doing great. You look at the best in hindsight, the best in hindsight is going to be zero because the alternate one, right? You see that? Yeah, so they're kind of plus one, minus one. It's going to be zero. Uh, but it's not optimal global play. Optimal global play is zero. So they have linear regret compared to the optimal global play. This is the main point. Uh, yeah. Negative regret is good for me. Very good for them, okay. but the whole thing fails because I wanted to converge to global optimum. But you wanted some regret function. Yeah, but for a convex function, regret implies global optimality. Okay, so let me spend a, a bit of time on it because if Costas is asking a question, I'm guessing 
people, other people didn't see this. So, yeah, so I would like this global regret to be optimized, right? For convex optimization, this going to zero means that the average point converts to the best in hindsight. And I want this to happen by a black box reduction, namely that each player is playing low regret by itself on its own local function. So this is how I define the local function. This is the global function. They have negative regret, which is good for them, but they don't convert to the global optimal cost. Okay. So I find this surprising. I mean, it's not uh, such a you know, difficult thing to show, but it's still interesting. And the question is, can you still do something? Can you still reduce from local regret to global regret? Um, so what you can do is linearize. So you can put some box here that hides what the global cost function is. Okay, so this box, you can still think of the same protocol. The adversary gives you a cost function, the players give you the, the points and so on. But in the middle, I'm gonna put some linearizer that is like the game moderator, you can think of it. So this is gonna sit in the helicopter. There is some joint thing gonna give, distribute the cost functions to the players. He's not gonna give them the residual loss like before. He's gonna give them some linearized version of the, of the loss and they are gonna do whatever they want in terms of regret minimization, it's still gonna work, okay? Um, what is this linearization? Let me see, uh, show. So this linearization is just going to be the local gradient at the joint space of the points they played. So each of them plays a point X, T, sub I, whatever you want to call it. There are K players, let's say. So at time T, first one play X, T, one, and so on. You take the gradient, one for each one, one for each coordinate, and give it the, look at the joint gradient and define this joint lo linear loss function, okay? So the joint linear loss function decomposes into the separate coordinates. That's, that's basically the property we need. So the convexity, it's not enough convexity, you need separa separability. I guess if it was convex, but separate would be okay. But this is, uh, why would it be the case? You know, the story, the case. But once we do this simple thing, this is the whole proof that you can basically separate out the regrets into the individual ones and get the global regret guarantee, which is the sum of the individual ones, okay? Good. So yeah, that's a simple observation. And now how can we use it, right? So. Everyone okay with me with this simple point? Good. How can we use it? And yeah, so distributed OCO we can solve by this simple trick. Okay. And how can we use this to control? So to explain how to use it to control, I need to give you a brief explanation of some methodology that has been recent, a recent new methodology that uh, has been studied a lot and basically reduces control to online convex optimization. And then I'm gonna apply what I said to the, that methodology and that's how the whole thing is gonna work. So I'm gonna now explain control from the lens of online convex optimization. And it's like a couple of slides. So bear with me. Um, so here is the definition of the control problem. This is not a general RL Markov decision process because we have much more structure in the transition matrices. So think of this small drone how does it behave? We have a state, the velocity, the position, and so on. And this changes according to the system dynamics and of the, of the drone, whatever the motor are doing. This can be described by a changing linear dynamics where it linearizes according to the Jacobian of the dynamical function on the local um, state. U is an action. This is what you, how much power you give to each of the motors. And W is some kind of... Um, disturbance that is adversarial. I guess we had a talk here about LQR, right? So that's exactly the same kind of uh, model I'm talking about. Um, linear, local linear dynamics, they can change. So that actually allows for nonlinear dynamics and some cost functions that are, appear online. And this is a fairly general formulation because it captures linear or near linear dynamics, can capture adversarial noise, can capture advers uh, arbitrary loss functions, not only quadratic, but any convex loss function. Um, yeah, so this is the formulation. What is the goal? The goal is to find the policy that chooses the control U to minimize the long-term horizon cost. 
that is the that is a kind of a brief statement of the control problem. We call it non-stochastic because this W doesn't have to be um, like Gaussian or, or zero mean, like in classical optimal control. The main differentiation in classical optimal control, you have Gaussian noise, like a zero mean noise. If you have zero mean noise and you know how the physics behave, you can compute an optimal policy offline. You don't need to see anything online. But like online learning, if we don't, if we don't know this noise, it's arbitrary, you cannot do that. There is nothing to compute ahead of time. It's not gonna help you. So some noise gonna appear. You can only say something in hindsight and your goal becomes minimizing regret, doesn't become to do optimal control. Okay. Um, right, so online control, I defined control and online control means that you are sequentially choosing a control input and you have no choice, you have to minimize regret you, because you have this adjacent noises. It is defined as the sum of noise of cost versus the sum of cost of the best policy. In hindsight, uh, it's also called policy regret. There are various notions of policy regret in the literature, by the way. This is uh, maybe not the most standard one, but still it's regret compared to the best policy. Um, so we want to compete with the best sequence of controls that take the state, generate a, just like a policy, right? Take a state, generate a control. We want to compete with that in this kind of general setting. Um, yeah, any questions so far? Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, great question. And the question is, can you do a bus control if the noise is adversarial? Um, yes, you can. I mean, the, the, the literature of control is vast. Robust control will amount to a min-max game solution ahead of time. It will say, um, what is the best control I can choose versus the worst case noise, right? Um, we know from online learning, since the, world, the work of uh, Foyn and Shapiri, that this is very suboptimal because what if you plan for this worst case, then it happens to be no noise at all. You kind of doomed. You did such a, such a difficult thing, whereas no noise at all, you can have done much better, right? So the correct notion we study in online learning, correct, I mean, that's what I think is correct, is regret because you're instance optimal. Like for every noise, you do the best thing for that particular noise as opposed to pre-computing everything. And the cost is that you cannot pre-compute nothing. You have to do it online and do it ahead of time. Very good question. Yes, Kostas. Uh, I can't really see it very well, but uh, is the counterfactual sequence of X had these? Mm -hmm. Is the noise the same as the one I observed in the, you have a, I acknowledge it. Uh, is the WT the same between the counterfactual sequence and the one you observed? Uh, wonderful question. It is the same. It is the same. Uh, just like online learning, we consider the loss function when we compare it with we don't think of the loss function as changing depending on our actions. We just think of them as like the adversary gave them, now do the best compared to them. So, yeah, we think of it as, as nature. Like, let's think of it of the, in the drone example that's going to be the wind or the rain or something like that. That this rain is it's not stochastic, maybe I'm not selling, but it doesn't depend on what you do. But I guess it's some physical material. Like if I take my little helicopter over here, maybe the wind is different than if I take it over there. But like I would, yeah. I would think that you know, if I change my, because yeah. you do policy regret. Right? Yeah, totally. That is the weakness of the model. Yeah, and yeah, there are ways to deal with it. Maybe I'll mention it's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm saying. Uh, but the analogy is to one I learned, not to something more difficult, which is counterfactual regret. Counterfactual regret is. More difficult. You're saying, had I done something different, the answer would also do something different, then what would be that? But you should have some counterfactual also, right? Yes, there is. It's, uh, it's in the middle, right? And I think this is the correct balance between the two things. It's not too difficult, not too easy. So, so but if it was Gaussian, you're good. Like, if, for example, yeah. like, imagine in what I do, WT is Gaussian. Right. And had I done something else, it would still be Gaussian. Can you cover that case or yeah, it has totally. to be correlated? Totally yeah. covered, yeah, totally covered. Yeah. Uh, it just have to have the same mean. 
Femeni do kri. Ja, to bi turi sam prvi. Da ne nikim bi ja to stavljeno. Ja, koja sam? Related to robust control, the paradigm there is that you design a controller ahead of time and, and, and you build it into the system and then it has to be robust to all possible sort of noises. So, so that's, that's uh, this of course does cannot handle that. I think it's much more general. I mean, I think it's a stronger general than robust control. We can discuss offline if you want, but we can have a whole discussion here. The thing about robust control is that you pre-design something for the worst case noise from a certain class of noises. And here the difference is you don't do that. You see on the fly what noises happen, and your regret is compared to the best thing you could have happened when for that particular noise sequence. That is the difference. And in online learning, this is known to be much stronger guarantee than pre-designing main maps. So in game theory, this is a stronger guarantee. I, I'm happy to discuss more offline. Yeah, also performs much better. If I, I can convince you with experiments, that's not uh, enough. Um, okay, so, but so also for control, I'm not gonna give the whole, I have a whole talk for it, which I'm um, happy to give, but not here. So and recently, there is a progress in this form in the following sense. There is a relaxation of the natural policies. The ultimate relaxation of policy for LQR is called the linear policy. It was discussed here. It, it's a linear function of the state to action. And you can relax it to be a linear function of the past perturbations. It's called the disturbance action controller. It's a more general class than linear. And the nice thing about it, it's convex. So linear policies are not convex. You have a cost, convex cost function applied to them. The whole thing is not convex. You apply a convex function to this policy, it's convex. So you can do much more things with it. Um, and using various techniques, it's possible to design gradient-based controllers that are new and they uh, have this regret guarantee. Um, and since then, there is a lot of work. Uh, I would happy to refer you to an ICML tutorial from um, a year ago on this subject. There's a lot of literature. Uh, here is an example of a basic result. There is an efficient algorithm that can minimize regret versus the class of all linear controllers in the presence of arbitrary loss functions, arbitrary bounded noise. This is something you cannot do efficiently, not by robust and not by optimal control or anything, because uh, if for a general convex function, even if it's in convex, computing the best linear policy can be very hard in hindsight. So there are computational advantages here. And what feedback do you get about CP? You see, what exactly do you see like, uh, about CP? And the gradients and with respect to X and U is enough. Yeah. Okay, the Jacobi. Jacobi with the U and uh, X is enough. And you can then take it with respect to your policy parameterization based upon that. Yeah. Because you have to set forward for how this depends on the policy parameterization. Yeah. And actually, Bandit, so yeah, Taula here worked on, on Bandit. Algorithms for this, even bandits is enough. Uh, generally, I'm interested to talk to her. She's very good student. Okay, continue. <laughs> so, how can we apply OCO to multi agent control? Um, so, multi agent control is defined like this you have uh, a similar setting to before. You have a dynamical system that, that uh, changes the state and the control. Maybe there is an observation. So that have to be full observation. Um, and we have the different agents. So it's similar to the, to the control problem I defined before, but now we have multiple different agents that are all sending their own controls to the system. And the state is a kind of a joint mess of this whole thing together with the, you know, the system, the observations. And so just like a multi-agent version of what I defined before. It's a cooperative setting. I consider a cooperative setting where we have a single convex cross that we want to optimize. We want the helicopter to fly to the, to the destination quickly as possible, most efficiently as possible. Okay, it's not that every engine wants to do its own thing. They will minimize their own regret, but the, the, the objective is joint. That is the setting I'm considering. Um, yeah, I, I'm assuming that every, this is full information. There are various generalizations possible. I'm not gonna get into them. So everyone knows everything. The actions, the control, the states, there is no hidden nothing. 
And what are we trying to do? We are trying, so every agent has a policy class. We want a joint policy. So every player does its own thing in such a way that they minimize regret compared to the best joint policy in hindsight. That's what the generalization of a distributed OCO to control. That's what it means. Um, and our result is that you can you can do that. You can um, you can basically have individual algorithms. Each of them is regret minimizing with respect to its own policy class. And what you do is you merge them together in such a way that they minimize regret plus a small kind of lower order term. And the way you do it, let me just say how you do it, is exactly like distributed OCO, but apply to this kind of more general setting. So what I'm gonna do is each player will observe its observation, play the control, receive the cost function and so on. The only thing is I'm going to linearize the loss function, not take the original loss function, I'm gonna linearize it at the point that each of them played and give that to the individual players. Okay. So I basically run on stochastic control from each of the players and by using the trick I showed you and various and the other well-known results, you basically get this uh, regret, uh, low regret property. Linear time varying dynamics. Yeah, actually it's easy to think of linear time as well. And there are various extensions. We can do regret for time varying dynamics. And that is useful because now we can consider nonlinear dynamics. So if they are slowly changing, this captures some, some form of if they are smooth dynamics, you can say something about nonlinear. You need to look at adaptive regret. And here you can talk to with my student. I don't see him either. Yeah. Satisfied. Yeah. 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 We borrow stuff from online learning. Hai Peng talk about it a little bit. You basically look at regret in every small interval. And you say in a local area, I compete with the best comparator. Now, if your dynamics changing slowly, you say, okay, I believe there is a local linear controller which is optimal for that because locally it's like looks like a stationary linear dynamics. So you have optimal local optimality. That's kind of the idea. What is this? Uh, yeah. Uh, is there a little batch that you use for this? Like, what is this theta, 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 theta. Ah. Yeah, I didn't go into details. What happens in, but but uh, clearly in uh, controlling in a real day, history matters, right? So you don't need to, even the policy parameterization we have, it's not the only depend on the last day. It has to go back a certain history. How much history depends on the system? Controllability and stabilizability parameters, and they decay. We assume they decay to stable dynamics, otherwise, it cannot do nothing. So it has to decay, and then and the amount of history you take depends on this decay. Got it. Yeah. So, like the matrices that might be used also have uh, this decay property? They don't, but the, the, the dynamics matrices, the A, A the system matrices, have, need to have spectral radius bounded by one, which is kind of an interesting property. That, uh, Books about this. This makes sense. Yeah. 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 Maybe related to this question, what's the policy class you are comparing with? The policy class is called the service action controller. Yeah. It's a policy the same class. As a single, the same as a single. Controller. A single one, but the joint. Every one of them. Well, um, this is actually a general black box reduction. You can have each controller can have its own policy class, and they, you look at the, the, the direct sum of all of them. But it's most easiest to think about uh, the status action control from each controller and they compete with the best one. This is more general than linear from each controller. It's more general than that. But the policy only take your own like observation history. Yes. And the joint action. Correct. 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 Or the history of the joint action. It's, it, it, yeah, so each, well, the definition I showed says that you look at the, at the you know, so the, the, this regret, the joint regret, with, with respect to the entire policy parameterization, uh, which is the direct sum of each policy. And the post function, call that post function. Right, thanks. So now, yeah, so actually related to your question, does it only apply to, you know, this uh, parameterization and so on? So actually by now there are a lot of results in this area and for DAC policy for full information, um, 
some some of them from my group some by so dylan here has a nice result in this area uh, there are other policies disturbance response for partial information there is neural network policies um, now that we can prove stuff about in the, in the neural tangent kernel regime and so on. So there are various uh, policy classes we can now talk about and give theoretical bounds for. And this is experimentation. There is a, some kind of aircraft simula airplane simulation. Um, and what, what uh, we, well, we is an overstatement, I guess Udai and Udari did, they coded it up and apply different controllers from different actuators and see what what happens there how does the cost behave um and the, so the the top row is when all the actuators are, in, are intact and the bottom row is when they're one of them is forced to shut off and then the the orange line i don't know how well you can see the colors so the orange line is the, our kind of new method and it does better than the when you shut off one controller it does better as you would expect uh, compared to other policies. Future direction. So Daya is giving a talk today at four in the open questions. So I, I will leave that to him and thank you for your attention. Awesome. Uh, let's see, does anyone want to start off with an open question? Or sorry, just with a question, I should say. <laughs> Um, oh, no one has a question. Okay, cool. Small question. Are the WTs, uh, are, they, are they adapting? They could. They could be adapting to your policy, just like uh, regret is robust to that, right? So uh, worst case regret is robust to the noises depending on your algorithm, and that's all fine. And just the one thing it cannot do is change it. We don't we assume it's uh, stationary like cost us asked. If we go back and have made a different policy, the W don't change now the same W. Or this same distribution of W. Okay. But it can be an adversarially adaptive to the solution of W. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, so maybe related question. So uh, I want to understand like you sort of some graphs and I want to understand what application that was and relatedly. Mm -hmm. uh, I could imagine settings where kind of like the different controllers, like if it's like kind of like a Group of little drones that go right. do something. Right. Uh, 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 maybe each of them has their own disturbances uh, yes. that they expect, like they don't share everything about uh, some part. I mean, maybe they can communicate. Like, I want to understand the types of settings you have in mind uh, uh, in, your, in, your, in your in the model you use. Right. Yeah. So this this particular experiment, well, it's kind of a toy. So this is a it's an airplane. And it has, I think, four actual tools on there. Is it four? I think it's four. Uh, yeah, I think so. Four. So there are like four different flaps, whatever. This flap, that flap. And then you kind of say, okay, each one of them has a policy to it. And it's gonna, and we're gonna say, okay, at some point, we're shutting off one of the, the flaps stop working, which actually is a pretty realistic situation. So what happens then? I mean, the classical approach we need to design a policy to begin with that says, oh, flap not working. We have a sensor, sensor we're going to send it to some centralized controller, and he's going to decide now to activate an impulse. That would be the classical approach, which is working well. That's why we're, no one flies with this. Everyone flies with the original <laughs> of design. So it works very well. But the idea here is that you kind of like maybe uh, can do something from a different perspective. So there is no centralized policy that you thought of every possible thing. That flap stuck, that flap also stuck, and maybe there are different positions. But you can imagine situations where they got stuck in some bad position. The airplane is going to start turning around, and maybe didn't plan for that particular situation. So, the hope is that you have individual agents that, given the what the others are doing, are capable to minimize regret on their own. That's what they're doing. Don't even centralize planning on their So they're simpler. Because they're simpler, you can do a better design. But you don't kind of need to think of the whole complication. And then they will robustly optimize the joint function. So this is what's happening here. So there's a joint function. I don't know what this function is, speed of the airplane position or something. I think it's some kind of like stability of it, I'm guessing, or, or something like that. Is it stability? There is some so this is like a, it's like a linearized LQR objective basically. Okay. So LQR objective means you have a quadratic cost, which means usually it measures distance to the objective plus energy expenditure. And you want to optimize that. So you can of course fly very fast. 
you, but you, maybe you want to minimize energy and reach the destination. So that is the, the cost kind of is optimized by the individual things, even after you remove one flap. So I guess I just to extend this to when it's uh, even more, this, so I guess this is an application where there is like, uh, uh, you know, basically all of these guys work to control an airplane. So they share a lot of things about the state and the, right. you know, disturbances of the airplane. Yeah. But, but I can imagine more general yes. settings where yes. we want to co collaborate, but we, we, we yeah. don't share everything. So yeah, yeah, no, I, to I totally get where you're going. Like where you're going is that you're saying uh, that's exactly what, what I will talk about. So. What happens when we, I mean, I kind of assume we have all the information available, right? It's the airplane, sure, they can all see that the flaps are going wrong. But what happens if we don't, we kind of, we don't information because we have millions of players or something, then we don't know what everyone is doing. And there are many issues actually to overcome here. For once, I cannot discover the actual disturbance that happened. Disturbance I can discover only if I know what everyone is doing. Then I subtract that from actually what happened and I see the disturbance. I don't know what it is. I have some very partial information and there are a lot of challenges here, and I don't know what to do here, but it's a good open question. So this, maybe if I, there are additives, maybe you can do something. Like that. So, but I'm going to the system in the same way that your input could. Yeah. Yeah. I totally believe that you can do something. And you can handle some amount of partial observation yeah. uh, so, in, the, in the paper. It's, uh, it's just like you need to be able to, the cost needs to be able to be computable from the partial observation available at each step. But then you can kind of do things with a different kind of policy. But yeah, these kind of uh, multiple drones things it probably won't fit into that level of uh, personal observation. Sure. I mean, there is an extension of this with uh, Max Simkovic. Uh, this video. So uh, he um, worked on, on partial, like there is a model in control that you have a linear your observation, linear function of state. And you can, there is an extension policy, students response control. You can look at like, some part the analog of the of disturbance, but only what you observe. And you can do the same thing with that information, you get interesting results. So I think that so we have that in the paper too. But there is so much to be studied here that I really don't know what it's a lot of the questions. Would you like to add something? Yeah, very interesting. So I was wondering, like, uh, in the beginning of our talk, you mentioned this independent learning structure, like independent learning dynamics, where eventually in, the, in your algorithm, you need to observe, let's say, the joint action of everybody. And, but you are, of course, looking for, as you mentioned, looking for a better goal, which is the, like the team optimal or like the global optimal solution. Right. So I was wondering if you like kind of, is there, or do you believe there's a trade-off between the information you can use in the algorithm and the, let's say where uh, uh, we can look for some equilibrium notion like in the game theoretic perspective. Right, right. this is a great question. I am, and you're asking about the tension between the, the kind of the harder goal of optimizing, but in an easier setting versus the, the kind of the weaker notion of equilibrium, but in a harder game theoretic setting, what's kind of the optimal thing here because, because if you yeah. run, let's say, no regret learning or like right. regret minimization right. algorithms right. independently, right. usually people are hoping for just equilibrium. So yeah. uh, global optimal may be too much to expect. Well, the reason we took this approach because we love regret minimization algorithms and regret right. minimization algorithms are known for online context optimization. You slightly deviate from it, they're not known. So um, it's it, not even not known, it's impossible. Like we have impossibility results that you cannot minimize global regret computationally. And a lot of people have, have even recent results uh, like in this area that there are all sorts of hardness results. It's harder than equilibrium, right? So Chi just talked about this yesterday. It's harder than equilibrium. So, but definitely it's an interesting question. I mean, one of the, um, I think it's really interesting to see what you, what you can do if it's slightly non-convex, there are various notions of non-convex regret that could be applicable here. Um, what kind of solution concepts they yield and so on. I definitely think it's interesting. I think this is the, probably the most exciting kind of direction I see from, I sense from this uh, workshop for now, yeah. Great Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is your question yeah. Good. 
I, very interesting. Uh, I was thinking, so this is a little bit outside of the box, so uh, let's just speculate on. Right. I was thinking about economic applications and, uh, you know, the next thing for me would be to think about these agents trying to get to the same objective, but trying to free ride on the other's motors effort to get there, yeah. which means basically they're maximizing a common function minus some private cost, which could yeah. be their battery or something like that. Yeah. Um, would that increase the complexity um, too much to apply this methodology? Or do you think there is hope going in that direction? Basically, I'm thinking about moral hazard kind of I problem. think this is very relevant. I think there, I don't think it's out of the scope. We're studying actually this kind of type of things. Um, yeah, I think it's very relevant and I think it's possible. I don't think this is out of scope at all. You're saying like, so. There's just an addition private cost for you. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Something yeah. that is convex right. in the control in the right. accumulated control. Um, right. I mean, if it's something simple, like you just subtract yeah. some cost for each individual agent, it's still right. convex in the global right. in the global function. So this will apply naturally. But there are other considerations when you go to economics like truthfulness and whatever, there are like other considerations, strategic behavior, you know, all these kind of things that are more complicated. But right. still, I think this is a great, these are great questions, great directions to take this whole thing. Uh, okay, maybe I'll ask one last question. Um, yeah, so I guess like part of the motivation for doing you know these like linear control problems, especially with the adversarial disturbances, right? Is like you imagine maybe you have like a non-linear system and you're like linearizing this, like maybe you want to stabilize this, right? Right, right. Have you thought about it at all whether there are any settings where you can kind of get like provable guarantees for non-linear systems yeah. by using this stuff as a component? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Edgar has some upcoming thing about it. Yeah. So oh, okay, we, cool. We should talk to him. Yeah. I mean, sounds uh, good. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it relates to this direction of applying adaptive regret to these, um, because you, you need your adaptive regret to behave better than how quickly the system is changing. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I'd be happy to talk to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. That sounds, sounds yeah. neat. Good. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, why don't we stop there and we'll take a break, uh, but we'll be starting back again at, uh, I believe, 1130. Yeah. And uh, well, actually, let's, let's give a lot one more round of applause before we go. Yeah, just